Hi, we are Anne Scrivener and Jonathan Lloyd from Digital Marketing for Artists. Welcome to our presentation. We have created a website specialising in digital marketing content for artists. The website will serve as a hub for both aspiring and established artists to gather information on how to better market their art online. According to London's insurer Hiscock, art sales online increased by 24% in 2015 and they have projected that this growth rate will continue through 2020, bringing online sales to a whopping 9.59 billion. The online art market is clearly a booming industry. Our target market are aspiring and established artists. Our goal is to take these artists on their journey from zero social media presence to expert. Our method to this approach is to create a resource library. Our website and online objectives were A. Drive traffic to the website. B. Gather leads through our two strong calls to action. Sign up to newsletter and contact us for more information. C. Create an interactive community through our social media presence on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And D. Build social proof through endorsements and testimonials. Our customer acquisition strategy incorporates a well thought out keyword planning and research to enhance search engine optimization and drive traffic to high quality and informative blogs on our website. Once there, we will convert our visitors by taking email addresses and they will immediately begin their journey through our marketing funnel, culminating in a monthly recurring charge for accessing premium level information and how-to guidebooks. We used Google Analytics to evaluate our website performance. The overview page showed a high bounce rate, that is the percentage of people who navigated the site only viewing one page. While this is a poor result, it can be explained by the fact that it was a project in development. Going forward, we would expect this figure to be much lower. Goal completion results for goal 1, sign up to newsletter, was a high 9.7% from social, and goal 2, time on site, had 67 completions in total. Through analysis of the other Google Analytic data, we gained huge insights into our visitors. Under audience, we could measure total sessions, users and page views. We were also able to gather valuable information on our visitors' interests, demographics and user flow, which enabled us to target where they reside online and develop our customer proposition strategy. Under acquisitions, we measured where our visitors entered our marketing funnel and what platform they used. Under behaviour, we could see our average page load time on Chrome is an acceptable 2.85 seconds. This is very important as page speed is one of the most important factors in SEO. We were also able to evaluate the average pages per session and which pages are most viewed. Under conversions, we measured the success of the goals which we had set. Further results showed a good percentage of returning visitors and a good average session duration. Social analytics showed us the impact of our social channels. Traffic to our website primarily came from Facebook, which accounted for 55% of sessions. However, while Twitter only accounted for 40% of sessions, it accounted for 61% of conversions. For our Facebook posts, we tried many combinations, including video, slideshow, link, events and photos to gauge our post success. Our best reach was for video. We posted at different times of the day and on different days of the week. We also scheduled some of the posts for foreign audiences through the use of Hootsuite. We analysed when our Facebook fans were online and tested posts at the peak times. We ran an event which had a great response and turnout in Auditorium 1 during lecture time and even attracted a lady off the street into our lecture hall. Facebook Insights allowed us to drill down into the various areas of engagement. Analysing the page views section showed us that most of the views were via mobile devices. Our second social media platform was Twitter. Our tweet summary showed the following results with our top media tweet receiving 2,402 impressions and our profile got 411 profile views. We gained ourselves some impressive followers too. Using Twitter analytics we could gauge our best performing tweets and using the tweet activity tab we could measure our tweet engagement data to work out which tweets were working best for us. We received eight engagements from our sign up to newsletter tweet. Our third social media platform was Instagram. We set up an Instagram business account and used Instagram Insights to analyse our data. We analysed reach, impressions and profile views on the account and then on each individual post we viewed the insights unique to that post, enabling us to gauge the number of times the post was seen, the unique number of accounts that saw our post and the number of times the post was liked, saved and commented on. What is step one to selling your art online? Facebook. It is the easiest platform for artists to set up, maintain and promote their art. Facebook has 1.9 billion active users, so it should be every business's first port of call when developing a social media strategy. For artists, it is easy to maintain posts and build a Facebook community. Facebook Insights is a very powerful tool enabling artists to monitor user interaction with their Facebook page. With Facebook Insights, artists can learn 
what is the best time of the day, best day of the week, and most popular content to post. As modern website browsers rely more heavily on content, our remit was to create a blog that would rank more highly and be easier found on the web. Though I use Keyword Planner and Google AdWords to identify my keyword, I also looked at other SEO tools in the market, e.g. Moz and Ubersuggest. I used the long tail keyword technique so that I could identify keyword phrases that were very specific to artists looking to create a Facebook page. It is cited that Amazon makes 57% of their sales from long tail keywords. If a customer is using a highly specific search phrase, they tend to know exactly what they're looking for. I then included this long tail keyword into my blog post. My key goal was to rank on the search engine by integrating long tail keyword searches into my content to improve organic traffic. Even though my content may be amazing, the challenge was to get it found on a very crowded internet. I was wary of keyword stuffing, a practice frowned upon by Google. I followed the best practice of a keyword density of 3-4%. to I also included my keyword in the first paragraph of my blog as the Google bots tend to index the first paragraph more often than the rest of the article. Finally, I rang my, my blog page URL through my site auditor and scored an 88% score rate. The objective of our, of our website is to provide digital marketing information for artists to help them sell their art online. Through keyword research, I identified a particularly strong long tail keyword in how to sell art online and make money. And with that in mind, I took what we considered the next step for my blog. Anne had covered what we considered step one in creating a Facebook page, and I covered what we considered step two, creating a website. The blog was written from the viewpoint of our target audience A, complete beginner, and takes them on an easy step-by-step -step points on how to go about setting up a website to some of the key points to be conscious of when doing this. There is a lot of valuable information contained within the blog, but it is structured in such a way as to not overwhelm. There are plenty of images contained within the blog, which also serve to keep the blog feeling light while imparting many valuable points. Both my blog and the preceding blog of Anne's take the artist through steps one and two on their digital marketing journey. The following blogs will continue to take the reader through steps three, four and five, etc., culminating in a situation where the once novice becomes an expert in successfully selling their work online. Before I published my blog, I ran it through mysiteauditor.com to get feedback on suggestions on tasks to be completed to ensure the best possible optimization for search engines. There were 19 issues suggested, however. These also included blog being below 1500 words, h3 tag not inserted, keyword not underlined, and so I was extremely happy with my final page grade of 86%. I created many links within the blog, and we were also conscious to link both blogs to each other so they could form a type of stepping stone. Once published, I posted the blog to Facebook and received a reach of 66 with 17 separate interactions. Following on from the acquisition of our email address database, we will drive customer development through a critical conscious email marketing strategy. Our aim here will be to target potential customers to sign up on a subscription type model for more personal help within the areas of which they have expressed interest. We would recommend a Google AdWords spend and feel that even a modest investment can pay rich dividends through in-depth and well thought out campaign architecture. Initially our strongest interactions have come through Facebook and this is worth further development incorporating Facebook advertising. What became apparent is our work continued was that Instagram is the platform of choice for artists and they can share instantly to Facebook, Twitter from this platform. Going forward, we will invest significantly more time in developing our Instagram presence. We also feel that Pinterest should be used as a platform. It is very visual and perhaps the future. Through feedback on the blogs, we identified a strong demand for an online library. This information is encouraging as it strengthens our stance on our subscription strategy.